All right, so I know that some of y'all who are subscribed to this channel might have discovered the channel either from the scuff controller video or from my HP Omen video that I made. I think I made like two or three. And this is my HP Omen currently as it stands. I actually had to put the computer in a whole new box, whole new case. So basically this is everything from the old Omen case. I don't know if I'll ever use this in the future for a different build. I may or may not do that. I'm not sure, probably not. I'm not, after going through this whole process, I'm not a very big fan of uh, mini ATX or basically smaller motherboards. I'm not a very big fan of it. And I'm not a fan of non-modular PSUs as well. They're very hard to build with. It makes the cable management very messy. Unless I guess you plug everything into the headers on the motherboard first, then put the motherboard in then put everything else in, you know, just to be neater with the wires. But I don't know, cable management's probably the hardest thing. I just wanted to get it back working because this is my first time ever building a computer. I didn't plan on building one. I actually plan on just putting an AIO in inside of this case. And it seemed like I did everything right, but the motherboard failed once again. I think that's the biggest weakness with the HP Omen series right now. The motherboards are not all that great. I've heard some people say some things about the graphics cards, but I think it's more so the motherboard that's the issue. The graphics cards might not be the best, and I think they are some type of like proprietary graphics card that HP got with some type of deal with with uh, NVIDIA or something, and then they just got the PCBs and put it on their own hardware. I'm not sure exactly how they went about that, but it's not like the standard, like the 1660 Super that came with the Omen 30L was not um, a regular 1660 Super. It's like, it's not any worse than a regular one, but it's like a proprietary version. I'll show you once I go over to my other build in a second. The Moria 3 motherboard that came with the HP Omen 30L is just completely shot. Like, I've tried it a couple times before I decided to just go buy another motherboard because this motherboard's this same model of motherboard has had problems multiple times and I didn't want to just have to send it back to HP and then just get another of the same thing that was going to give me more problems down the line so I wound up going with this this motherboard tough gaming x570 plus and it's been pretty good definitely way better like my temperatures are way better so this is the this is the air the AIO that I went to put into my shit put a little post-it note on there so I remember what I have in here because I have like some screws and brackets and shit but this makes the CPU so much cooler it's insane like 30 degrees cooler so here's everything in my new case got the AIO there but as you can see there's just like some cords that are kind of messy and they're in the way what wound up happening is that's the only way that I could route the cables simply because this is a non-modular PSU, this EVGA PSU that I bought. But I don't know, I was just happy to get the computer back, back running. And it's crazy though, because the CPU runs at like 29 degrees Celsius now, which is just kind of nuts to me. But I feel like between the AIO and the new case, the computer runs way better, it runs way cooler. Uh, that's not to say there's anything wrong with the Omen 30L case at all. I think the biggest problem with that is the motherboard, as I've said. And then this this graphics card, I think it's some type of proprietary GTX because it's not like the regular standard flagship model. Um, but I mean, it's good enough for now. Eventually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get like a... Um, 3060 or 3070 and I think I could manage that with my current power supply maybe eventually over time get a modular PSU so I can have my cables a little neater but nothing's really messing with my um my thermals or anything so I think it's all running pretty good I got another stick of RAM coming in the mail so I'll have 24 gigs of RAM in total um a little overkill but it'll be good for using something like DaVinci Resolve or you know any video editing or anything like that that I might have to do oh uh, so yeah 
as a as a update and as a um, I guess new uh, thing. What I would say is the motherboard's the first thing you're gonna want to replace. Then maybe a power supply, and then whatever else from there, like an AIO or something like that. I mean, that's just gonna add to the longevity of your system. At the end of the day, um, one thing that I've learned or realized is that uh, make sure you do all your research when you pick a case make sure that the motherboard fits in the case when you pick a PSU make sure that it's the right wattage make sure that find out how much how much power your CPU needs your GPU your motherboard your fans all of that and just do your research. Don't go out and get a case and then have a motherboard that doesn't fit in the case. That's actually what I did at first. I went and bought the motherboard, came back, tried to put it into my Omen case, and was massively disappointed. Had to go back to Best Buy the following day and get a new case. It wound up working out. It took two days or so just because I didn't have everything that I needed right away. But after everything... I don't know, it's it's a valuable experience. It can be a little nerve wracking when you're trying to put a computer together and you're worried that something's gonna go wrong. But I don't know, it's a very satisfying feeling once you get it handled. So I don't know, let me know what y'all's experience have been with the Omen 30L. Have y'all done any upgrades? Have y'all had any problems with having to get it repaired or anything like that? What's y'all's experience? Everybody have a great day. Hopefully you found this useful, entertaining, informative, whatever the case may be. I just had this come to my head and decided, hey, I spent a good amount of time last week basically rebuilding my computer. Thought I would share it with you. And if you got any advice for me, maybe for the cable management, how I could do it better while not having a modular PSU. I really don't want to unplug any headers from my shit, to be honest. I just want to keep rolling as it is and then next time I have to do anything I'll, I'll open it up to dust it out maybe in a month or so and eventually open it up to put a new GPU or something like that in there but other than that I don't know just want to keep keep going with it keep doing work and everybody have a great day man appreciate y'all thank y'all for watching if you're here this long into the video you obviously are into computers and yeah take it easy one thing i almost forgot to tell y'all when i finally got everything up and running i had the activate windows watermark and i wound up using a product like a app called like product product key or something p-r-o-d-u-k-e-y i tried to use command prompt and the um basically the key that it gave me was i guess the one that they used in the hp factory to install windows 10 on a bunch of machines at once so that was like not the right key. So I used that Produ key thing, P-R-O-D-U-K-E-Y. There's a bunch of different applications and softwares like that that you can just download real quick, get your um, Windows license key, and then activate your Windows again. Because when you change your motherboard or certain other things, you're gonna have Windows act like you just try to like duplicate a machine or something basically. So they're gonna wanna try to get you to basically buy windows all over again which I wasn't about to do so you can use something like those it'll tell you the license key and then just enter that in um, you know like over here in the settings at update and security and then you just go to where it says activation and then that you'll have everything set once you get your key Otherwise, you'll be able to use everything fine. You'll just have an activate Windows watermark that can get kind of annoying. So yeah, there's plenty of programs like that, Produ Key, stuff like that. <clears throat> because at the end of the day, HP installs operating systems on a bunch of computers all at once in the factory. And so sometimes you're not going to get the actual individual license key that was specific to your hardware. You just gonna find the one that was like the batch but if you got any questions or any advice just hit me up everybody have a great day